All right. So um, very happy. I'm very proud to to be one of the very sophisticated and diverse panel in Horace's Global Meeting 2012. Uh, we're supposed to be in Japan, but now we are in online. Sometimes we are on uh, Portuguese. So um, I will first introduce myself, and then our panel will give everyone five minute introduction of on themselves and also the company, their organization related to the blockchain enablement. Okay, my name is Louis. I'm the first generation of mobile internet in China and Asia. I successfully uh, build and invest uh, 10 different unicorn across China. So right now, I'm a, okay, I'm a frequent speaker on Harvard, MIT, and Columbia for uh, Asia uh, exaggeration and incubation on tech and venture. So I'm currently invited to the National University of Singapore, the um, capital market uh, institution from the China government. So I'm very keen on doing cross-border multicultural uh, communication. So I look forward to everyone's viewpoint on the free question listed in the Horace's uh, booklet. So feel free, five minutes of introduction, and then we have uh, the viewpoint from our privileged panelist. We will start first, go lady first. Maybe uh, Matra from, uh, pardon? Uh, I'll give the floor to you, okay? Okay, great. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Marta Belcher. Uh, I'm an attorney in the United States. Uh, I'm the general counsel of Protocol Labs, and I am also the chair of the Filecoin Foundation. Uh, and um, my big thing right now is is working on building the decentralized web uh, and Filecoin. Um, so Filecoin and the Filecoin is uh, sort of like the incentive layer for for the decentralized web, and it builds on top of a technology called IPFS, which is the interplanetary file system. And the way that the interplanetary file system works um, is um, if you if you think about it, you can think about it sort of like um, if I said to you guys, there's this great book, you should really read this book. And instead of telling you the name of the book, I told you go to the New York Public Library and go to the third shelf from the left, uh, you know, five books over and, and go find that book. Well, that's how the current internet works. Like the way the internet works now is you actually go and you find things based on their location, not based on what the content actually is. But you might get to the New York Public Library and find out that that book isn't there anymore or that there was actually a copy of that book that was right next to you in whatever country in the world you're, you know, you're in or that you had it in your backpack the whole time or that someone ripped out of it. And, and that's how the internet today works um, is, is that, you know, when you tell, when you go to a particular place on the web, you're going to a location. And the way that IPFS works is it redesigns the internet uh, to instead be like telling someone, Hey, go read this good book. Um, it's called Gone with the Wind or whatever the book is, whatever the book is called. It, it instead allows you to identify content and then you can pull that content from the closest place to you. So you can pull it from, if there's someone within a computer sitting next to you, you can pull it directly from their computer and it doesn't have to go to some central server across the world and get pinged back to you, um, which is, is, is really important when you're talking about um, things like communicating at very long distances, such as between the moon and Earth, for, for example, which is why it's called the mm -hmm. interplanetary file system. So Filecoin is the incentive system that's built on top of that. Uh, it's the incentive layer that basically allows you to pay other people to store copies of files on the interplanetary file system um, so that you know that those files are always going to be available and, and are going to be nearby and you can fetch them very easily. Um, so it's sort of like Airbnb for file storage. It lets you take your files, chop them up into little bits, store them on other people's computers and um, and be able to actually uh, re retrieve those files, have those files stored, but using other people's hardware, um, using smart contracts to automatically compensate them uh, for their, to automatically compensate them for storing for storing your files. Um, so we really think that this, this, this new way of doing file storage can be the 
uh, the the base layer for the decentralized web, that this is a, a key piece of of infrastructure for for the decentralized web. Um, and we we were very excited to launch this back in October. Um, and and we've now reached over six exabytes of data, which is uh, which is over a billion high definition high definition movies or uh, 12,000 copies of Wikipedia. It's, it's a, a huge amount of data. So I'm very excited to be working on Filecoin and specifically to be working on all the legal issues that surround Filecoin and, and really building what we hope is the future of the decentralized web. So that's, that's me, that's what I'm working on. Um, and I will uh, hand it off to the next speaker. Perfect. Thank you, Matra. Okay, shall I go on? Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Igor Ekumin and I'm coming from the logistic and supply chain industry. I'm based in Slovenia, in Europe. Um, about uh, my experiences, I'm working in this industry for more than 20 years uh, with uh, experiences in different country, countries and different companies. Um, uh, I'm always say that uh, I'm lucky because uh, I got all these uh, competencies in various industries, not just in the business, but also in the academic world and in the politics. I served my country as a deputy minister for three years. Uh, and uh, also I'm still beside all the, the, the roles which I'm covering in uh, the company. Uh, I'm also adding value with uh, lectures at the various universities and, and uh, academias. I'm actually the deputy CEO of the company CargoX. CargoX is a revolutionary blockchain-based solution provider for logistics industry. Uh, our legacy our, uh, is to reshape the shipping industry in the global trade by introducing the blockchain document transfer technology. Um, when we started, uh, we saw the, the big, big challenge in changing the way of uh, exchanging the bill of lading. The bill of lading, uh, for the one who don't know about, that is a document of title uh, in American transport used to prove and and exchange ownership of the cargo. This, uh, this document is, exists since 1397. Uh, and even before that, there was a very similar document called the Book of Um If I recall well, uh, was used from 11th century on. And can you imagine, can you imagine the situation that from the 14th century till now, the document is still the same. It's in paper, it's, uh, it can be lost, can be damaged, uh, and so on and so on. So we, uh, we uh, really think about that, what can we do with the blockchain technology, and uh, we try to change the, the, let's say, the old way of thinking that if uh, don't fix something if it is broken. But we say, no, we have to change it. Uh, uh, bill of lading is not broken, it's just old. It's just the way, it's just one uh, thousand years old. And we would like to change the way of exchanging this document. Uh, so we are one of the seven uh, uh, seven uh, companies in the world having the approval of PNI clubs uh, um, to digitally exchange this document title worldwide. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Iko. I think very, very, very practical and uh, applicable uh, technique uh, technology on on the global shipment and logistics. Great. So, how are you, everybody? Good morning or good evening, based on your locations. So, my name is Mohammed Rashidi. I'm a computer engineer and I'm the executive chairman and founder of Global Group. 
It's a digital transformation and innovation company. Uh, it works in many uh, research uh, uh, papers uh, inside our innovation lab, one of them in digital transformation. Uh, under that research group, we are having the distributed cloud. And I believe this works with uh, what uh, Marta was talking about, edge computing and getting nearby uh, servers instead of going to a centralized, so decentralizing the cloud and having it distributed uh, and getting proximity communication is, is one of the objectives, main objectives of this distributed cloud infrastructure. Uh, we are having the first of its kind uh, technology marketplace where helps the startup with their innovations to uh, enroll uh, inside the uh, our stack and from there they will be exposed to uh, the other side uh, from startups and, and uh, business partners to consume this technology in a very uh, intuitive and simple way uh, by embedding the SDK of that platform. It's the first of its kind uh, fully integrated and fusion uh, SDK. And uh, in the second uh, research group or working group we are having the DLT, uh, cryptism and uh, smart contract and one of the DFTs is the blockchain and under that one we, we build a complete uh, asset uh, uh, digitalization and uh, tokenization platform with an exchange and trading. Uh, this platform uh, is uh, been uh, incorporated in Switzerland, in Geneva uh, and got the no action letter already from FINMA for uh, the financial securities mainly would be Sharia compliant, which is called Sukuk. Uh, that platform is, is going to give, uh, uh, to unleash the power of Sukuk, because Sukuk itself is an unproved financial instrument that you can use uh, to, uh, to finance lots of uh, big projects. Today, sovereign Sukuk is being used by all governments globally or uh, big funds. They use it for hedging. Uh, we are looking to democratize this and make it into the private and even fractionalize the big ones into uh, the mainstream. Uh, in the third one, we have data and AI, and we are launching a complete infrastructure for data uh, where we are going to do uh, data inference. We, we have the data modeling uh, and uh, after that, we do data inference and uh, reasoning and decisioning using uh, machine learning and deep learning. So this is basically at a glance and in our innovation, but in the mainstream on global, it has uh, uh, products in the market. We have our flagship is the financial services, digital financial services, new banking services by issuing uh, digital wallets and acceptance of wallet, either uh, in store, online, or in mobile, with embedded marketplace, a good marketplace. And within that, we offer digital tourism services, complete uh, platform that connects uh, Medias Galileo Saber. And today, also, we enabled the uh, IATA NDC, the new capability for, for ticketing. Uh, the third domain is digital healthcare. So, in digital healthcare, we are in the genome space, so in genome sequencing. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we sequence uh, the DNAs and come up with the reports that helps uh, people to avoid uh, addiction, obesity, uh, skin allergy, uh, a lot of uh, uh, problems that they are facing uh, nowadays. And the last platform is the digital entertainment. Uh, so this is at a glance what is one global we are presented uh, in four continents, 17 countries, uh, with our own data infrastructure, data centers infrastructure, and our own development houses. All right, so uh, I put on like uh, the website in the checkbox because I think this is a very big group. So if you want to go look for detail i think uh, five minutes is not enough so uh yeah this is the website so uh am i interrupting you or you want to pass on the mic to malaysia i'm done i believe oh 
blockchain, we will be detailing what we are doing in that block, blockchain space because our ecosystem, mm. it starts from the digital onboarding, actually. It's a complete ecosystem into mm. the compliance. So I, I prefer the next question we go into deep dive. So we give the, the, the chance to our uh, friend uh, Kenison to, to introduce himself. Thank you, sir. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, it's afternoon in Malaysia. Uh, this is Kenison from US Art Bank International. Um, um, I'm in the art world, so you must be asking, what are you doing here, right? Well, we are here because the, the key issue of provenance of art needs to be better managed globally. I think it's managed well, but blockchain provides a very secure environment for art ownership to be uh, secured and traded on. So that's number one. Number two, um, what, are, what am I doing here? Well, uh, I'm corporatizing US Art Bank into, uh, into the art bank, the, or the gallery business into a corporate entity called US Art Bank, and we have invested in buying up art. Now what we are doing is we are going into the digital space creating the marketplace and using blockchain. So it's an end-to-end -end solution, except that why are we doing this is because uh, our firm believe that uh, the artists who produce the art, um, once they sell the art, and, and, and later on, 20 years later, there is actually no returns for them. It's just a one-off. At the point they sell and they go away, the subsequent owners uh, trade on it. So with the blockchain and with, uh, with, with tokenization uh, and mining, they are able to be able to put into the contract a lifelong earning stream, thereby making art a more uh, sustained earning for an artist. That's, the, that's what the digital world and the decentralized world can bring to these artists. So what are we doing? What are we doing? We are gathering the art. So we've got one artist. Now we are going to go into that uh, space of using blockchain. Uh, just as much as logistics, you know, bill of exchange, the art provenance, um, and making sure it is transparent, that everybody knows uh, the, the journey of the art we have has gone through. So that gives uh, artists direct space to be participating in this uh, marketplace uh, and continue to be there. So... Uh, and we believe that that, uh, that decentralization empowers everybody. From the art collector, who is able to understand the uh, the changes in the marketplace faster, able to get into the marketplace faster, from the artists themselves. Who is, uh, and, and, you know, today it is uh, very evident from the, 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 uh, the last one, last six months on the NFT market that has just blown up. Uh, it is it is settling down, but you know it's going to be here. So it is all creating a, a new market. One is a digital marketplace in the digital environment, and the other is the 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 real art. The 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 the, the, the actual art itself can also uh, grow. What it means also is a lot of new money can come into the business because fragmentized art ownership can be more easily available. As much as fragmentized share trading, and making it the, the common denominator for people to invest into art, into 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 shares. So this thing, uh, this is the space and this is the journey we wish to uh, embark on. We believe uh, blockchain is enabling it. Right, Lee. That's that's my short introduction and answer to the questions. Oh, you already answered the question. So. Uh... So I think that, that uh, our friend from Malaysia have a very deep in uh, opening for, I think a little bit not about technology, it's about the philosophy um, and also the rationale behind. Uh, I really like to start a conversation more like uh, ecosystem-wide. So um, who wants to take the next, um, like another five minutes to dive in one of the three questions? I think, uh, may I repeat the question first, okay? So first, how can blockchain give the voice and public to power to the public? Okay, and what new leadership model must be tied? How to embark blockchain to our brave new digital world by challenging government to legislate for the new e frontier, uh, tech leaders, and the responsibility come from the economic power and worth. 
Uh, may I shorten the question by saying that I think what Frank tried to mean by fancy word is how blockchain technology enable and optimize our society uh, and also our ecosystem. To be short, okay. So who wants to take the next question? Next, next four, like next five minutes. Okay, Igor. Igor. Oh. Igor. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I would like to to give an answer to the last your question, uh, talking about uh, government uh, legislate for the new e frontiers. Uh, as uh, we we are involved in, in this sector uh, with the government, but uh, before uh, before I I explaining an answer to this question, I have to go back in the history of our company and present and present what we started, how we started and where we are so that at the end I can I can give you a showcase. So <clears throat> as mentioned, we found our mission in the global maritime shipping and supply chain uh, industry uh, related also with the global trade. Um, with our revolutionary product by any standard, we, at the beginning, we believed that uh, the market adoption will, of blockchain and blockchain solution will be very quick. But we were very, very wrong. Um, the whole process of exchanging the bill of lading as, as, well, as the document of title involves several uh, partners, several stakeholders. The uh, exporter, the carrier, the, uh, uh, the consignee, the release agent, two banks. This is at least the, 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 the general, general way uh, of, of, of exchanging the document. Uh, <clears throat> normally, the exporter or the shipper uh, is is uh, uh, with his carrier, he is compiling, compiling this document and sending most of the time to the receiver, to the company on the other, on the other side of the world. Can you imagine sending a document of title worth 10 or more or, or hundreds of, of millions uh, to the other side of the world? What can happen on the way? Can be stolen, can be damaged, uh, any other fraudulent act on the document, just to get to get the the the, the cargo uh, at the end where the ship is coming at the end to get this 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 um, a cargo. Uh, with the advantage of the blockchain. Uh, it was possible to design a digital process where document uh, document originality and ownership are truly validated with the blockchain. Uh, we say when we started with the project, we started with the idea that this can be done through blockchain, and the the more, the biggest benefit is that it cannot be falsified uh, and. In that way, the process is secure, it's fast, it's reliable, and definitely we were belie we believe that we can reduce the the cost uh, for around ninety percent, the cost of sending the document. Uh, the, we pioneered this, let's say, process. Uh, in 2018, uh, by sending the first blockchain bill of lading in history. Uh, if I remember, it was uh, the shipment from from China to Slovenia or to Croatia. I cannot remember well. I know the, I, I, I still remember the, the sh who was the shipper, one of the biggest Chinese companies. Uh, but at that time, when we started this, we need a lot of efforts to convince 
the shipper to convince all sailors to convince all the stakeholders to start using uh, a blockchain technology. At that time, blockchain was still an exotic word. Three years ago, uh, I can say that things were looking bright as we onboarded uh, the largest brake bulk carrier in the world, and we were very happy and and uh, proud of it. Uh, we won a lot of awards at that time uh, all around the world. But uh, still, still, the adoption was was very slow. Mm. Uh, when when we compared uh, our progress on adoption with two major competitors uh, who have been tried to digitalize the bill of lading for more than twenty years, we realized that we need to think outside of the box. Uh, Still at that time, less than 1% of documents of documents of title in the maritime uh, business uh, were transmitted digitally. So we said we have really to change this way of printing, signing, sending by couriers and all those things we have to, to, to change, to change this, this industry. Uh, we delivered a new platform for blockchain document transfer uh, on which you can exchange more than 60 different trade documents, not just the bill of lading. Right now, you can do even even more. You can exchange a lot of other documents besides beside, uh, the bill of lading. Uh, but still, still this, let's say, uh, extension of our of our platform from one bill of lading to 60 different trade documents uh, it wasn't enough to bend the adoption curve uh, up then we we start to thinking in, in another way and we started to communicate with government uh, and the government saw the benefit of such digital resilience, uh, trustworthiness and uh, global neutrality, neutrality being available to all governments and business uh, uh, at that time. We started uh, with India in 2020, where we integrated with the Indian Port Association Port Community System. Uh, 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 the, the cargo egg solution, and this was the, uh, after a, the direct incentive from the Indian government. So uh, this was really the first case when we interact with the government and and got a very uh, a very good result. In this year, uh, Egypt started working on legislation and adopted our technology as and and our company as well as authorized blockchain document transfer gateway for mandatory advanced cargo information manifest, which is a protocol uh, where you in advance sending all the documents about your cargo, which will be imported in the country. You, can, you, uh, you have to know that right now, just seven countries and Egypt is the seventh, seventh in the world, uh, having adopted the uh, advanced cargo information uh, system. And Egypt is the first one on the block blockchain technology. From that point, when we agreed uh, with, uh, with Egypt, everything started, started very rapidly. So the curve bent, uh, bent uh, up. Uh, I, ha I, ha I have to say that currently we take hundreds of customers on platform per day. So can you imagine from starting at the beginning with, with few, few customers today, we onboarding more than 100 per day. And uh, we can proudly say that we are one of the fastest growing blockchain document transfer platform in the world right now. Uh, this case proves that governments and international institutions really have the power to move industries into, into new technologies. 
in blockchain as, as an example and help the economy to grow grow to create new jobs to create new uh, opportunities to improve trans, uh, transparency and of course to uh, grow in our sector logistics and supply the chain industry to to a higher standards and higher level uh, implementing such solution helps to avoid uh, uh, failures uh, which was uh, a very good uh, um, uh, case during the past pandemic year as some of the supply chain bottlenecks were explicitly caused by reliance on archaic old document and process. Uh, yeah, Cargo X is a, is a, a success example how in with Egypt we can prove to do something better with the blockchain technology. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Igo. Uh, I think Igo mentioned uh, the whole example for what the company do and how they improve efficient in logistic global wise. I think that the floor should be given to uh, uh, the gentleman who have raised the hand from one GoPro. I think um, he is waiting for the mic. So let's hear what what have my ecosystem standpoint about blockchain. Okay, uh, I, I believe regulators. Uh, this is the question about how to challenge regulators to accept a blockchain to be within the ecosystem. Uh, we need to understand what is the worries about regulators. So regulators, mm -hmm. their, their worries is protecting the, the economy and uh, also the rights for uh, the citizens uh, and uh, people, uh, residents living in this country. Mm -hmm. And by fulfilling that uh, objective that they are having, it doesn't matter if it's a blockchain or other technology. We would like to see the values of that. And I believe uh, depends on the regulators in which industry. Every industry has its own regulation and it has its own uh, pain list and objectives. So uh, regulators uh, usually build a policy and try to execute that policy and then after that monitoring uh, its uh, performance. So uh, blockchain is the best tool for uh, having uh, policies, structure inside it especially using uh, smart contracts for that. So uh, if we go into the domain of finance, as I can see in the poll, is, is number one, everybody picked finance as an industry that blockchain is, is more uh, helping and supporting and might disrupting and reshaping. Uh, smart contract can act uh, in a very critical uh, problem that's happening nowadays is uh, the money laundry. So how to prevent money laundry and how to uh, uh, protect the economy from these uh, monies that are coming from uh, blocked the countries from OFAC or CFT or, or PEP that uh, usually use. So all these uh, kind of sanctions need to be screened in a cross way. So blockchain is the best to do that by having the smart contract running uh, uh, in, in a very continuous way and, and uh, get the, the roots of uh, all the initiation of these transactions that, that happens. The same thing can go into the education by, by checking the fake credentials uh, from uh, the universities themselves when they upload all the uh, academic certificates into the blockchain and uh, if you go either into employment or you are uh, moving to another school, verifying how genuine is your certificate is, is the worries of the regulators in the education system. So uh, uh, smart contracts as well as blockchain is, 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 is going to resolve uh, that issue. And uh, you can go uh, forward with many applications. I don't want to take a lot of time. but. Uh, uh, having a policy, structuring a policy, uh, executing that policy in a distributed manner and enforcing its monetary uh, and preventing whatever being uh, uh, meant inside the policy not to happen, uh, blockchain is, is the best to, to do that. And that's where regulators will see the value. Thank you. 
All right, so I'm trying to type some of the key points that you guys have revealed. Might not be exactly the hundred percent. It helped the audience to to remember and understand. So I I think uh, it just mentioned a very nice uh key point. Uh, blockchain is not a threat. Blockchain is a tool. So how to use the tool to to make the world, the regulator, protect the citizen, and also enhancing their 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 uh, they, what, what they are doing the best. I think this is very clear to, to protect, to enhance, and, and to facilitate. So I give the floor to our lady, Matcha, uh, which is I have a very professional legal. I love hearing legal accent because I have a legal major. I passed the LASA, but I never go to law school. So with all due, no further ado, please give the floor to uh, Matcha. Sure, absolutely. Yes, um, yes, I've definitely done a lot of working with regulators and, and trying to explain, um, you know, w- what blockchain is, why it's not just, you know, just a tool for, 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 for money laundering, uh, and crime. And, you know, definitely, unfortunately, in its early days, uh, got a, a bad rap. Um, but, um, I think, I think it's, uh, it's interesting. One of the ways just to like give an example of one of the ways that, that this has played out is there have been a lot of different regulators who have, uh, you know, there's regulation of blockchain directly, but then there's indirectly uh, the types of regulations that will inadvertently affect blockchain. So, for example, all over the world have these data protection regulations. And these data protection regulations always assume that you have a centralized intermediary that is able to make decisions about the data. And that is just not the case for blockchains. And it's also a lot of these data regulations, for example, GDPR, um, assume that you have a uh, assume that you have the ability to delete data, which is which is also not the case on blockchains. The whole point is that you can't delete uh, data from blockchains. And so, um, uh, some of, just to give you some examples of the way that this is played out, when you know speaking with regulators, um, testifying in legislative bodies, one of the things that's been so important is talking about the ways in which you know, sim- similar to frankly what Mohammed was talking about and, and others have talked about on the panel. The, the ways in which blockchain can really help regulators achieve the goals that they want to achieve. So explaining to them that, that smart contracts um, uh, can, you know, if, if, if you care about data privacy and, and um, you should really care about blockchain because it, it, it really gives the ability for users to own and control their data. For example, you can write a program with blockchain. You know, smart contracts are really just programmable money. But you can write a program that says, for every second of a song that plays on radio, automatically pay the songwriter one one millionth of a cent and automatically pay the singer one one millionth of a cent. And similarly, you can write a program that says, if I have this genome, if I have this genetic data, um, you know, my, my personal genetic data, I would like for it to be accessible by I'd like for it to be accessible by um, researchers, but not by advertisers. You know, I want researchers to be able to use my genomic data, but not for people to be able to use it to advertise to me. And you can write that into a program and automatically have those uh, permissions executed. Um, and so if you care about blockchain, you if you care about uh, data privacy and, and user control of data, you should really care about blockchain and, and not want to break it by uh, including things in, in GDPR or the New York Shield Act or the CCPA in California that would potentially break blockchain. So a lot of the points that folks have been making on these panels are, I think, exactly the kinds of things that really are useful in in talking to regulators about why they should care about not breaking blockchain. Okay. Back to you, Louis. Uh, hi. So I think we are... Uh, already have a, a, a very generous um, idea about how I stand. I think we are all optimistic about how the, the, the blockchain is actually improving the society. Uh, I, I think uh, if we are able to, to leave one minute for our friend from Malaysia before we move to our, our audience question, which from a, 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 a very active audience, so before we go to Q and A section, I want to have a one or two minute from Mal- friends from Malaysia uh, to to run up our conversation. Okay. Yeah, um, I think I think just echoing every, what everybody's saying that the blockchain is the base 
that <clears throat> that needs to govern uh, the decentralized governing of uh, ownership and 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 um, across the world across the world across borders now uh, more and more regulators like regulators need to get on board i think that's the biggest problem getting on board and for them uh, the biggest challenge for regulators to get on board is decentralization is loss of power uh, it's transparency greater transparency but it also means a loss of power for authorities now that i think is going to be the biggest challenge that we need to face because that is what brings back the decentralization brings back to 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 the market to the people that you have a greater control over your data or greater control over your asset greater over your transaction and greater transparency so yeah i think that's 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 basically what i see uh, in, the, in the horizon thank you okay all right so i i think we just perfect timing i see the the bells is raining but i will give the floor to our audience who already raised the questions so let me okay so we click it and uh, wait so i need to wait until the bubble comes out wait 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 okay i inviting him on the stage so and still no app i think is see here hello yeah perfect there you go hi guys uh, so i'm calling from california so quite late uh, so i would uh, i have a question and i think part of it is already answered by marta and, uh, and other individuals as well but as the regulatory bodies are having a self defense that once they leave it for the blockchain they lose the control i think one of the gentlemen talked about that but also another part of it is that what i think we are missing is that the two aspects which i have uh, for the audio, for the panel one is that once the blockchain become pervasive from the smart contracts and perspective you have decentralized servers all over the globe which has to basically sync with each other before you can do certain things for a certain types of technologies right or certain types of contracts to be fulfilled and in the current infrastructure if it is not there to scale that kind of syncing in real time if you look at it right so that's one question in my mind what do you see how it is going to be that's one and the second is we are still talking about uh, i mean the government's not doing blockchain from a currency perspective is another part because the, you lose the whole fiat currency aspect around it right uh, and and uh, related to that question basically is that there are i think there also is, there is not too many there is a strata of the society which is very much uh, in tune with the advanced technologies like blockchain so it has been simplified to a very real underlying users those who don't know even much about internet today so this is there is a lot of implementation aspects around it so can you guys anybody from the panel can take three three questions so feel free to take i think the first question about a contract at this t centralization uh anyone who want to take the i think the first is related to the second question so feel free to take it No, I, if, I, if I may just uh, just make a um, a comment uh, related to the question about scalability and how the internet infrastructure uh, when things will uh, scale up. Um, yeah, uh, you're right when you are saying that uh, the transmission of the document is not immediate. That's that's true. Um, how i see how i see the possibility to 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 bring this to a higher level is that there is a echo so i i'm hearing myself uh, uh i'll go my there is a, uh, i think that uh, that there is a possibility of with with uh, to increase this uh scalability uh one one possibility will be with the interoperability in between blockchains because today today we have different diff a lot of different blockchain networks uh one of uh, well, some of them very capable to do 
to do a lot of transaction on a big big scale of of transaction but uh, today they cannot communicate in between themselves are like two different continents continents with no no connection in between with the interoperability this will solve uh, some of these problems definitely because in that case there will be different networks uh, possible to communicate together i can imagine that there is a lot of uh, a lot of let's say um, challenges how to implement interoperability, interoperability from the technical side from the legal side and so on but that's <clears throat> that's how i see one of the of this solution uh, don't forget that there are a lot of international uh, uh association industry bodies and uh and uh, conferences which are working on, on this uh, international chamber of commerce UCITRAL, uh in our industry fiata uh, the forwarding industry digital container ship association they're all are working on the technical and legal and even on the operational interoperability so i hope that this, this will happen very soon hope that i answer a little so if i may uh, contribute into that uh, infrastructure today is is being uh, used for blockchain in a proof of work and this is where the slowness is happening and uh, i believe the next generation the ethereum 2.0 is based on uh, proof stake and proof stake is, is how uh, it's going to be, uh, I believe, the enhancement and the execution. I picked Ethereum because most of the smart contracts are, are being built on Ethereum. So that's the, the, the current uh, big uh, computing uh, protocol that everybody is using for building the, the tokens. So uh, proof of stake is going to help a lot and uh, because there is an incentive onto that. Plus, you don't need to run the computational uh, algorithms uh, to, to uh, build the, the, the blocks. So proof of stake is going to be uh, moving faster, uh, shard networks and uh, lots of uh, uh, mechanisms and techniques are coming with uh, a new Ethereum. It's going to foster more and more uh, the, the communication about the interoperability this is very good interoperability because some protocols have its own uh, niche uh, like iota iota it works with the uh, iot devices and it has uh, uh, the wallet already embedded uh, for the tokens and it has some identity like the ssi uh, structure uh, this can be uh, interoperable via interledger interledger today is a protocol that works across uh, blockchains uh, protocols. So interoperability is very important, but it depends on the case and uh, the use case that you would like to build. And uh, also uh, interoperability with the current existing digital ecosystem of chain is using oracles. So uh, this protocol as well is helpful to, to blend and uh, foster the coexistence of blockchain not to be completely isolated. Uh, it's going to be integrated and slowly, slowly it, it will go into the mainstream as much as it, it become uh, nailed down and uh, all the talents are available to acquire uh, the expertise needed to come up with these smart contracts to resolve our problems. Okay, thank, thank you. Uh... I think we, we already uh, passed the time and I see the audience still in the room. So may I take the liberty to answer one more question? So is there any question from the, from the four? You can type it or you can ask me to, to give the mic. Okay. Hmm. No, okay. I don't see any question. So I want to ask the last question for myself because I don't really have the chance to talk in front of all the experts. So can I ask, uh, what is, okay. So because I'm quite interested actually 
how blockchain is embedded in the culture for Middle East. Uh, I personally been to Abu Dhabi and Dubai and understand China actually share the same culture, a little bit the family tree. So how blockchain actually uh, affect the religion and culture uh, from that perspective? I think we can both say most of the uh, modern world, we have a very new uh, government ecolo- uh, ideology with combining the, the, the system, the, 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 the infrastructure. But for a very long history, just like uh, Egypt, uh, Egypt already have a modernization. China still have a very, very big family tree. So how we will affect blockchain in, in the society with a more longer, um, a long heritage. So I will, I, I, I'm quite curious about how, how is the impact in, in Middle East from blockchain? So I, I believe uh, blockchain, mm-hmm. as I mentioned before, it's a tool. It's agnostic. It has nothing to do with the culture itself, unless you would like to project it into a certain scenarios to you to know your ancestries uh, mm-hmm. by using the, the DNA and to protect mm-hmm. that. If you talk about religions, uh, to to protect your religions uh, and uh, the Quran, for example, in mm-hmm. Middle East, mm-hmm. uh, that the verses of Quran nobody tamper it or, or nobody play with it, so it can be also in the blockchain and any copy comes out of that you can validate and make sure that this is the right Quran it's not being tampered or played with and in the history you can uh, you can authenticate a lot of facts that happened because you know with the generations the, 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 the Napoleon Bonaparte was saying uh, winners are making are writing the history so nobody knows actually what happened so uh, if you would like to go into these uh, civilized countries that have uh, an earth and heritage, it can be with the, the oldest people that have that kind of uh, knowledge. They can now uh, protect it also inside the blockchain. And any books or any movie comes out and talk about a story, it can go first and validate inside the blockchain. Is that story is correct? Is that uh, behavior of these nations uh, uh, in the old days was like that? So mm. uh, I, I can see this is the way if you project it in certain cases, it will help you how to do. It depends. Uh, the innovation about uh, blockchain, it's agnostic and it is completely neutral. So you can use it. Oh, they have left us. Ah, I believe you disappeared and then now coming back. Uh, so this is. Yeah, yeah. Lewis still not coming. Yeah. So this is uh, the, the, this is to answer your question from my point of view. Yeah, before I end this question, so actually, what I imply is I, I've been spending like first ten years learning Cantonese from mother tongue, ten years for English, and ten years uh, for Mandarin from China. I think I, I don't want to be a robot, so I'm learning French and and a comp- contemporary arts. I'm a very professional. In, in, in modern world history. What I'm trying to say, I don't want we all become authentic. I want artistic people to make subject object a subjective perspective like art. So if all the history become a fact, it's not a story. So I, I'm not against saying all people should do blockchain, but I think maybe 90% of the very uh, factual or who relies on uh, authentication and credit I think at the most optimus world 90% uh, blockchain nobody actually use money right so everyone would have a credit rating system whether you can trust or not the transaction costs are so low and then we can still have 10% of our time putting a more effort in, in more subjective so the reason why I ask this question because I think what makes up become a human Compare if at number one to zero is the ten percent without blockchain. 
or without digitalization. So I, I, the question is, it's not a trap. I'm trying to ask to understand, uh, are we trying to modernize the world of 100% robotic blockchain authentication and factual, but without 10% of the restoration become like uh, appreciation of art or maybe subjectivity? So this is my standpoint. So I think being a human, I don't want to become uh, uh, like a Terminator, like have a Genesis a robot managing my brain, but I have at least 10% uh, freedom to, to, to create uh, for creativity for, for most importantly. This is... This is actually, if you read the, you know, the vision of One Global and outside our website, it's called Elevating Humanity by Connecting Life. Transcendent. So not connect. Hmm. So it, it is where we are trying to have everything related to technology is under the serve of humanity, hmm. and and this is will be going back into the brains and machines. So if you are repeating yourself, I'd rather to put a virtual machine instead of you, not a server even. It's a VM to run your tasks and duties and uh, people being created to learn since the inception of this uh, world uh, and uh, the humanity. It's learning. This is the only difference between us and angels. Angels, they don't learn. Uh, they don't learn. They obey. We are the only one. Uh, demons, the same. We are the only one who learn. So this is the only unique uh, characteristic humans have. Learning. So if you keep learning, if you keep understanding and inspiring from the, the, the nature and from life itself, you can do a lot and you cannot turn it to a robot. But if you can encapsulate yourself and be obsessed with these tools to do everything for you and you don't want to do anything, these tools will eliminate you. So as much as you get these tools below your thinking as much as it will wider your, your, your horizons. And by the way, arts, it's unleashing that power. The painters, uh, when they do uh, the draw, either uh, in serialism or in uh, sculptures or in whatever uh, domain they are in, they start uh, making a lot of ambiguity because they don't want to finish the story. They want to keep you think what's behind this why you come up with this color why this character is here why this shade is here why this person is nearby that uh, creature or that mountain or that sign so it's all about learning this is what it makes you not a robot okay even if native computing coming it wouldn't teach your consciousness and learning. So yeah. I can't challenge that, even with quantum computing. So, because this quantum computing, you are the one you will do. So, human is the one who created. All that human created. So, is it a, a superhuman, advanced human, this brain interface where you have mm. these things, these are just to provision you with the data. Mm. It will not make you smart. If you are not learning and understanding and you are smart enough, technology will not make you smart. It will make you faster than others. That's it. It will give you to crunch the data. It will decide on your behalf. If you are smarter, you can use technology to be more smarter than it. <laughs> Perfect. So on, on that note, if I may add on, on the art side, yeah. So we believe in enriching the world through art. From the artist to the collector, the whole strata, the whole marketplace, and the whole ecosystem is to enrich itself. And if blockchain can provide that, blockchain will provide the template the, and facilitate faster, more efficient, yet and make it more affordable. Because you are able to use tokenized, you are able to use a fractionalized art. That, that's one of the things that is very important today is that the efficiency that it can bring and the, uh, uh, the, the, the velocity you can bring into the business enables everyone to participate. I think that's one of the things that's very important is the digital divide needs to be broken. And one of the things that is going to bring it is the blockchain. 
because of democratization. Also, you can protect artists for, yes. for example, today applied arts. You know, art is, is everything. Is this clothing? Is, is the earring? The jewelry? The mobile interface? The UI UX? These are applied arts. Uh, in order to protect the the origins of these, the one who originated, the one who made it, it's been Copyright. actually inspired to somewhere else. So protecting that right, and anyone will create a, a buzz or a, or a, 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 a t-shirt or a, a certain car design that's been inspired and applied from another art. So that artist will be paid. So exactly. this is similar to the question of the similar to the example of Marta about the musician that's singing and every second everybody will become a musician. Every second you will be you will be paid <laughs> for how many audience been watching. So <laughs> this is this is actually really, moment, you know, the the, the the precisely, you know, uh, musicians all over the world who who have put uh, put their music out. Because of the inefficiency of the system and because of the lack of transparency system, they're not paid. They're not paid. They're, they're not uh, today. It is such an inefficient system that um, they are left out of, of just you know there's so much of copyright infringements, etc. That becomes um, 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 it doesn't develop. Musicians can't develop. Artists can't develop. Uh, designers can't develop. So you actually. Uh, this is actually liberating and, uh, and and protecting creativity. I, I'm, I'm, that's what I uh, I see, you know. Okay. So I think uh, I would like to in, I send an individual email to each of you so I, I can make a personal connection. And I think this is the best so far. I'm not trying to be uh, uh, like moderate, but I think... This time, I feel I need to pick up a lot of uh, blockchain trend, and also I want to be more uh, embedded to to the world uh, blockchain tendency instead of just looking to the the doggy coin or the ICO or DeFi exchange. Uh, I I think that this comes at a very good point for all the audience. Uh, actually, we are moving forward the whole humanity to the. Uh, next level, which conclude is a transcending process. So I look forward to transcending with you guys next time, and I I wish you guys have a very good morning, evening, and afternoon. Thank you so much. Hope to see you next time. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye, guys. Bye-bye.